Oh, I can come up here, Dougie. Yo, 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 listen. I'm gonna share an energy with you in this video that I hope you can take in your own life for more excitement, more connection, more fun, more love. <laughs> and just live, yeah, live a better life. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tie it all back in at the end. So make sure to stick for that. But I'm, this is, a, this is my own personal blog for me. I'm processing the past week, which is maybe the best week of my life. Feeling I'm buzzing, I'm euphoric. I feel great. So I'm gonna talk about adventure, lifestyle, relationships, money, and more. And this is for my own processing, but I'm gonna share it for you guys. We're over here, I live on Oahu. I'm in Y&I. I'm gonna go to the Y&I Farmer's Market, but we're gonna cruise down to Canna Point. I'll take you guys with me. Uh, I find, I like these car ride-along talks. Uh, they're easy. Something about it makes it easy for me to process. But, so the past week, I took a, I went to Kauai on vacation for five nights. I went with a female friend. We camped in four campgrounds and five nights all around the island. We did the Nepali Coast Trail to Kalalau Beach. It's a really remote part of the island. It's pretty inaccessible. And uh, it's very 11 miles one way, 22 miles round trip, 7,000 feet elevation. Did it with a 35 pound pack. Kauai is incredibly beautiful. Look in front of us though. This is my backyard. <laughs> Super grateful to be here. My God, I'm extremely grateful to come home to my vacation. Come home from my vacation to this. I'm incredibly blessed. That said, Oahu to me, second most beautiful island. Kauai is the most beautiful island. Everything looked CGI out of a movie. Waterfalls everywhere, sharp ridges. It's got one of the wettest places on earth. Um, rocky coastlines, inaccessible private beaches. Jeez, it's so beautiful. So we camped out there, camped under the stars, um, met some travelers, and then pa packed out, um, did some cliff jumping, went to Waimea Canyon, which is, it's like a little mini Grand Canyon on Kauai. It's, it's maybe a tenth of the size of the Grand Canyon which is still pretty big for an island in the Pacific. It's crazy. And then the last day, uh, yeah, hiked in there. And we went and we, we, we got a uh, views, physical views, overlooking um, where we were camping uh, in the trail. And then the last day, uh, we got a helicopter tour of the island and got to see from above all the things we had done. So I'm going to cover try to chunk it off in different topic by topic and the first thing why I think I feel so good is the amount of physical activity and sunshine and the camping um, aside from the first couple nights where and then I'll talk about my uh, relationship with my travel companion although I'm gonna keep it pretty private and then I'm gonna talk about uh, money and kind of tie it back to you and also for me how I want to live my life um, forward but uh, yeah no I mean I was offline digitally offline uh, there was no service for a lot of it uh, we're packing up for bed at 8 watch the stars I'm asleep at 9 I'm up at 6 start my day walking around on the beach before sunrise wherever we camped it was on the beach at sunrise go swim in the ocean I mentioned 22 miles of backpacking with a 35 pound pack, 7,000 feet elevation. Did extra hiking on top of that, cliff jumping. <coughs> Something about physical activity, man, feels so good. Started my day today, again, woke up at, at dawn, before dawn, walked around, swam, and then went for a bike ride down here, came back, got the dog. Now I'm talking to you guys. Man, just, yeah, being unplugged, being outside is so good. I slept. Man, our tents, one of them was 10 yards from the ocean, not even maybe, yeah, 
just far enough to not get splashed. Tents open, feet dangling out, warm summer night. Slept so good. It was just it was in the sun, perfect weather. Uh, the amount of physical challenge. It wasn't so challenging. The, the, the return was pretty challenging, especially the last half, because my pack wasn't, I borrowed a backpack that was a woman's small, and it just did not fit right. But, yo, look. Look. Oh my God. What an absolutely beautiful place. Beautiful place, my God, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Jeez. So, that's not that different from what I'm doing now, but I think having no electronics, or less electronics was really, really useful. It was really great to be unplugged. I really like, oh, man, I want to do more camping, sleeping outside, even though I'm asleep already, like 100 yards from the ocean. No, not even. 30 yards from the ocean, the place that I have out here. But just to be even more immersed. I can't even separate these things, but yeah, more, I'm going to be even more immersed in experiences. Um, physical, physical experiences. So part of the physical experience is the physical beauty, but also adventure. Oh, it was novelty. You know, I went to places I had been four years ago, but I went to new places, um, variety of places, and got to see it from a lot of different angles. So it was really a bucket list thing, especially Kololau. And honestly, all, one of the things it did as well is it created new possibilities of, oh, there's this waterfall uh, we didn't go to, uh, the, the next beach we didn't swim to. And um, yeah, I just, <laughs> I want to return to that place and do it again, maybe next summer, maybe with a bigger group of friends, uh, you know, just the possibilities. So something about living a lifestyle outside, being outside, living outside, spending your time outside. Uh, it's, it's so good, it's, it's everything. Here we're coming by what's known as Pray For Sets Beach where oftentimes in the morning there's dolphins. I don't see them right now. No dolphins right now. Okay. So my companion, I went with, I've known this girl for a year and we have such a great connection in terms of similar interests and uh, activity levels. Um, we both love to hike and the ocean be physically active and are both into heights. She's into skydiving. I've never done skydiving, but I like climbing, cliff jumping, um, and ridge hiking. And she could keep up with me. So we really hit it off when she's on Oahu. She moved to the big island for six months and, um, one of the things, I talk about this in other videos, but anyone who's a companion of mine, I like to have them take the Hexaco test, and I'm particularly interested in their anxiety score. And she scored like a one out of 10 on anxiety, which is like major green light. Let's spend time together. And that made it more of a great trip. I've traveled I had a girlfriend who stressed over everything and wanted to fight all the time, but with with uh, my companion here, we, we get to the campsite and <laughs> I borrowed the tent from a friend and it didn't work. The elastic went in the poles, had lost all elasticity, so the skeleton didn't stay together. And we had to drive an hour and a half at night to go get a new tent. <laughs> And it was cool, there was no stress. Neither of us stressed out, no fighting, no drama, right? So this girl comes from a, an excellent family background. She also, she doesn't drink or smoke, which is also major green light. All that said, she's not my girlfriend. And I love how I played it socially. I mean, it's not a game to me. But I mean, if I have a goal, it's for deep connections that last, right? And one of the things that I found is 
when you when you go to try to make everything about sex, like hook up with every girl or try to make every girl your girlfriend, it cuts a lot of relationships short. Even if you succeed and you hook up or you do something, it still often leads to like a breakup and then you're not friends anymore necessarily. So I super value friendship and I saw this girl should be my adventure companion and um, it's not making sense for her to be my girlfriend and if, in that case there's no need to try to hook up with her and I can make it clear as well that I'm not going to try anything with you. I don't, I don't chase women. I don't pursue women. If she wants more, she has to try and um, she didn't, which is fine. Which is, which is totally fine, and I think that's a great way to operate with women, because again, a past version of me or a lot of guys would have screwed this up, and we wouldn't have, the trip wouldn't have happened. And also, it shows you, again, this is something I'm, I know, but and a lot of you guys know, how unimportant sex is, I think, because some of the worst times I've been having a lot of sex, and my companion as well, she said like, yo, this isn't the favorite trip I've ever been on in my life. And I'm like, yo, we had such a good time. Don't need, it doesn't need to be obviously romantic or sexual to be like euphoric peak experience. Um, something that's, I wouldn't say overrated. Yeah, I'd say it is overrated, right? As a goal, right? So... Um, I'm just happy with my own maturity and social savvy to have been able to do it and not fucked it up, <laughs> which again, a lot of guys, whatever, maybe I would have 10 years ago, but yeah, I, I she's leaving. She wants to come back at some point. Um, and we don't have plans to see each other, but of intentions and yeah, my goal for someone like this is to keep them long-term in my life in some capacity because, man, that's what, I want continuity in my life, right? So if this is a friend that I see and we travel together every once in a while, something to look forward to, hell yeah, super happy with that. So, uh, um, where else? <laughs> okay, well, another thing that happened is so I was offline uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I was uh, in a trade. And I came back Thursday, and I had been stopped out, and I re-entered. And I re-entered Thursday morning. I'm basically not working, right? I just I look at the I have a plan. I have an idea about the markets. Um, I'm gonna not, not talk about it in detail, but everybody everybody's saying that Bitcoin has to go lower, and I was. I'm, I trade um, counter sentiment. Look ahead. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a beautiful place. So when everybody's saying... Um, I'm going to have to get out of the car here. When everybody is saying price needs to go lower, I'm thinking the opposite. You guys hang on for just a moment. I'm going to take you with me. I'm going to get a picture. So, I made $10,000 this week as well, in the last week. It was a really good week in trading. From not really doing any work. And I think having the outside lifestyle and companionship was really helpful in um, staying relaxed and not so focused on it. Wow, I cannot even believe it that I live here. I'm so fucking lucky. My God. My goodness. Okay, so I made a bunch of money. Um, and on the first day, my companion sang, <laughs> Would he ever fly in a helicopter? And I'm like, no, no, no. Kobe Bryant dying in a helicopter kind of traumatized me. 
Um, I would maybe fly. I don't think I'd work in a helicopter. And she's like, I want to do a helicopter tour, potentially. And I'm, I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe that could be fun. But she's, you know, we we're talking. We're, to, we're together for five days, so we're talking about a bunch of stuff. You know, she's saved up for a year to come out here and, and kind of half work for a year. So she's running low on funds, and that's one of the reasons she's going back. So she doesn't feel like she can necessarily afford a helicopter tour. And she's not fishing for me to pay for her. But I'm like, okay, well, if my trade pops off, maybe I'll buy us tickets. So Friday, I look. <laughs> From Thursday morning to Friday afternoon in about 16 hours, I'm up. My trade's up $13,000. And I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's, I'll book it. I'll, I'll buy your flight. So I made some videos and I talked about don't pay, spend money on women. And there's except there's exceptions. I spend money I spend money on women sometimes. And one of the main ones is especially if you're traveling as a man if you travel with a younger woman. You have different I'm 34, she's 23. You have different earning capacities, right? So I don't know how long it takes you to make ten thousand dollars, and I'm not always make. It's not always that good in trading, but when you're have different earning capacity and you want to do something, and, and your companion cannot necessarily do it, that's when I'll pay because it's like I want to have this experience. I'm not giving you money, but I want to do it. You can't afford it. I can afford it for both of us. I'll pay it. Because otherwise, I don't get to have this experience. So, I'm okay with partially paying for trips and paying for things. Even if it's just a friend. Even if it's just friends. Just because it's about you creating experiences for yourself. Right? And... People will share in various ways. I believe it always comes back around. Um, and I don't know, if a woman's having your children, obviously you can spend more. Yo, look, the dolphins are out. Um, see the, the blue, the boat on the right? The double decker. I'm gonna be working on that boat starting Tuesday. So one of the things that I've known and one of the takeaways, are the dolphins out? They're snorkeling. I don't see the dolphins. But the double-decker boat in the background, I'm working on that. I'm going to be working Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. I'm going to be working 10-hour days from 6.30 to 4.30. So one of my takeaways, and this is even before the trip, but is, again, I want to have more immersive experiences and be more around people, more social, more outside, more physical. And doing dolphin tours, there's no commute. It's five minutes from my house. That seems, be creative. That seems like something I should do. So I emailed all of them. I heard back, I got the job. I start Tuesday. I'm not getting paid great, but it's not about the money. It's about collecting moments, experiences, and connections. Um, so life, let's kind of tie it back together. Now, one of the things is money. So I made a bunch of money, whatever. Well, money is a really useful tool to experience things, but if you think about what money is, if you think about money, you don't really own money, right? It's not part of your body, it's separate from you. So you, you can use it, but you don't really own it. I mean, you own it in that, in that there are laws to protect you from theft, but you can lose it, right? It's not, you can use it, it's not really yours. On the other hand, moments turn into memories. 
experiences turn into memories. Memories are stored in your body, in your nervous system, in your brain via chemicals and structures and they are part of you. You may lose them when you die but they cannot be taken from you. No one can take your memories from you. No one can take your experiences from you. So when you When you so for me, my life is oriented around use money as a tool to collect experiences. So that's what this trip was was a, a, seri a series of awesome experiences. That's what my, my life is. That's what working on the dolphin boats is. That's what doing the hiking tours was. That's what being an organic farmer was, working the farmer's market. That's what being a professional Magic the Gathering player, working security, being a basketball coach, working service, moving to Hawaii, traveling Mexico, Japan, all across Europe, all across the US, having these different pursuits is making me richer with things that I own, which is memories. So that's how I'm orienting my life. And that's really what I'm preaching right now. Part of it is health though, like experiences are better when you're healthy, right? You wanna be fit. <laughs> I don't need to go into it too much right now, but yeah, that's why we do the dog training, we do agility training, all the different hikes, the surfing, variety and novelty. It expands life. It makes life longer. It makes life better. So, I hope you take some ideas from it. If I could make recommendations again, it would be orienting your life where money's a tool and you want to make as much as you can in as little time if you don't like what you're doing or do it from really interesting novel experiences like what I'm doing with Dolphin Tours. Make your life interesting. Make your time interesting. Make your days interesting. Introduce change, um, deepen connection, and make the goal not sex and monogamy, but in just pure love relationships that can endure. Live outside, be extremely physical, extremely physical, reduce internet consumption and usage. These are various things that I can recommend. So, yeah, just reflecting. Um, if you wanna see highlights, I'm gonna post a reel or something. I might post a short, on, or might post something on YouTube, but I'm mostly gonna post it on Instagram. Something that's kind of annoying <laughs> is the different formatting. YouTube is landscape, and uh, Instagram is portrait, and I basically did all my videos in portrait, which is made, was maybe a mistake, but it's okay. Yeah, I should've done everything, landscape and portrait. So I could have done a cool YouTube video, but it's okay. It is what it is, and we live our life without regrets. <laughs> Although the one thing I didn't get that I would have liked would be a new tattoo from there. All my tattoos are, you, tattoos to me are something that you can own because they're a part of your body. That's one of the things I like about tattoos. I'm not a materialistic person. I like my tattoos because I own them. They're a part of me. And I usually get tattoos at the end of a trip like that as a uh, memory. So yeah, maybe get some ink today would be interesting. Um, that would be interesting to kind of end the trip. I don't know what it would be. Like I would want a waterfall, but I didn't leave room for water. Yeah, maybe a little helicopter. Uh, helicopter up here. 
Yeah, I got time today. I might try to do that today or tomorrow. Let's see if there's a local bar over. Yeah. I think I will in the next couple days. Maybe I ask Brett. Yeah, I have a friend who does tattoo. Um, anyways, appreciate y'all. Much love. Y'all are amazing. And, uh, talk to you soon. I uh, hope your, uh, hope your life's good. And let me know what y'all think.